can. So the question was, can a mosquito abatement have any effects on your hive? So a really great way to avoid having mosquito spray uh, get onto your hive is if you register them with the state, they will know where you are, know where your hives are, and then they can avoid spraying mosquito spray over your plot of land. So I think if you go to the, it's the, what website would you go to for that? Gov Department of Ag website is where you can register your hives um, and then they can help avoid the mosquito spray. You could also call them. There's a lot of different strategies here. So if you notice that your hive has some swarm cells in it, there's a couple of things you can do. What I would not suggest doing is letting them swarm. I would try to avoid it if you can. Um, we want to keep our hives managed and contain as much as possible. Um, so what I'm going to try to do this spring with my hives is I'm going to try to split them before they get to the point that I see swarm cells. However, if you see swarm cells in your hive, you can take uh, some of those frames and, and move them over into a separate hive so that when the queens hatch, they can duke it out, one will win, and then you'll have two hives. So that's a great option if you have room to grow. If you don't have room to grow, it gets a little trickier. Um, there's a lot of options online. There's uh, the modified DeMarie method that I learned the other day. Um, so I encourage you to look that up. Modified DeMarie, however you spell that is a little tricky, but that's an option to sort of artificially split your hive and then put it back together. Um, but you want to avoid your hive swarming. However, I had, I think like six swarms last year. So what you can do if your hive swarms is you can go to idabees.org and they have a gigantic red button on their homepage that says swarm and you can click that and it'll help connect you to local beekeepers that have learned how to collect swarms and they can come help you with that. And they always appreciate a donation to the club for the service. Okay, so uh, a typical hive, the question was how many brood boxes and um, honey supers do you need in a typical hive before you need multiple hives? So my hives um, at Boise State have two big brood boxes and that's where they're at right now in the winter time. And then as they grow and develop, I'm going to add more honey supers to them. So, however, to answer your question, I will probably split my hives into two hives regardless because those uh, bees right now, their population is about as low as it's going to be, and so they're only going to get bigger. So I'm going to split them from the very beginning, coming out of winter. Supers depend. So how many honey supers was the question. So uh, it depends on how you want to harvest. So if you want to harvest um, less, but a lot of times, you could harvest when that honey super gets full and then just put it right back on. Or what you could do is once seven out of 10 of those frames are full, add another honey super. If those fill up, add another one. And sometimes they can get pretty high if you have a hive that's doing really well. Some of you in your first year might find that you don't get enough honey to harvest this first year and that's okay. Know that that's a possibility, but some of you might get a little bit that you can harvest. Are bees on the increase in the United States or are they still declining? Uh, that's hard to say, but I think that they're probably increasing. I think there's a lot more knowledge out there for beekeepers than there ever used to be, especially with the access to the internet. So there's a lot more hobbyists too, which is something that we're trying to do here is get all of you involved in beekeeping on the hobbyist level versus just the commercial level. So beekeeping, um, is certainly growing with the popularity and just the access to different supplies like what D&B is doing with selling supplies. Yes sir, they do. They mate while flying. Talk about multitasking. That's quite the feat. So yeah, so uh, a queen when she emerges from her cell, um, she'll hang around in the hive for a few days to kind of gain her bearings, but then she'll leave and so will some drones and they will mate. Um, outside of the hive. And so there is a good chance that she'll be mating with drones from other hives in the area, which is where you get mixed breeding with bees. And then she'll come back into the hive and that's the only time she'll mate. She'll mate a bunch all at once and then come back into her hive and lay eggs for the rest of her life, hopefully. So her question was about pesticides and their harm to bees. The best way to not um, have pesticides get into your beehives is to not use pesticides. There's really no other option than just learning to live with some of the weeds that are around us. What can your neighbors do? 
It's harder to convince them to do the same thing, but know that bees will fly several miles in any direction. So whatever is within their reach is what they're gonna access, which can make it a little bit difficult. So um, it's hard to totally um, eradicate pesticides, especially in Boise where who knows what your neighbors are putting on their yards. Uh, so the best thing you can really do is, is take that philosophy yourself and try to encourage others to do it, but it's tough. Good question. So his question was, uh, when they lay eggs and it creates brood and then they hatch, how do they clean it up? The bees clean it up themselves. And bees will clean just about anything you throw into a hive. It's pretty amazing how hygienic the bees will keep their hives. So they'll clean it up and they'll reuse it for more brood. And they'll keep that cycle going. So his question was, how many hives can you have in a certain area? So city ordinances have different regulations on how many you can have in a certain area. I think the city of Boise, you can have three per acre. Um, so it, four per acre, three per, acre. three per quarter acre, that would be 12 per acre. So you can have quite a few hives uh, in the city of Boise. However, Canyon County, I don't think is quite as friendly to it. They have a little stricter regulations on how much space you need for beehives. So I'm not sure where all of you are from. I'm, sh I'm sure a lot of you are from this area, but you want to check with your local city ordinances on that so that you can make sure to abide by those policies. So his question was, what kind of production do we get out of our hives at Boise State? Um, so we were really fortunate this year. We had um, a couple hives that were doing really well. I think they were in their uh, second or third year. Um, and so we got about 80 pounds of honey out of one harvest. Um, well, it was multiple boxes, but it was in one harvest. So how do we split that up into multiple harvests? It would have been different but we did get 80 pounds out of several hours of work. Uh, and then we got more out of that hive. That wasn't the only harvest we got out of it. So your hives can produce as little as zero, obviously, and some hives can produce upwards of 100 pounds of honey, um, but it totally depends on the conditions of your hive, how many bees are working, what the weather is like that year. Really dry years make it harder for bees to get what they need to make as much honey. So the variables are so different that it's hard to predict. But that's how much we got. So his question was, uh, should a hive be in sunlight? And the answer is yes. So you do not want to put, you do not want to orient a hive in a place where it's going to be shady all the time. The sun is what gets the bees going and warms their hive and makes them happy and makes them bees. So you want to put them in a nice sunny place uh, where they can get quite a bit of sun. So a tactic that I use, I'm on a rooftop, so I get a lot of sun, but I always orient my hive to where the entrance is facing the sunrise. So they get that very first glimpse of morning sun. Um, I think that helps them just get going a little quicker in the morning, um, but it also helps them to get the most amount of sunlight that they can get throughout the day. It could be pretty close. Um, you wouldn't want to put the entrance of your hive right up next to your front door, but um, you can have hives pretty close to your house. Um, a trick that some folks use if they have uh, an area that doesn't have a lot of land is they might put the entrance of their hive facing a fence to where when the bees fly out, they'll just go up over the fence and carry on their way. Um, but you can have bees pretty close to the house. You just want to make sure that the people in your family or your neighbors don't have any allergies. And if they do, you just got to warn people. So our question is, you know, if you, have, if you don't have an extractor, extractors cost a lot of money. Is there, is there a co-op or something that you can uh, get into to use their equipment? And the answer is yes, the Treasure Valley Beekeepers Club. They have an extractor that they rent out. You just have to um, rent it out in advance, get your name on, on their calendar, but they will rent it out for a nominal fee. And that way you can use it and um, not have to purchase your own. Uh, maybe eventually you want to, but you don't have to right away. The Treasure Valley Beekeepers Club also does host a class on how to extract once it gets closer to that season. Um, and that makes it really helpful so that you know the quickest, easiest, and maybe least messy way to extract your honey. How do you handle mites? So I'm gonna tell you how I handle mites because there's about 10,000 different ways you can handle mites. So number one, I wanna know how many mites are in my hive. So I use a method called an alcohol wash. I encourage all of you to look that process up, but essentially I take some uh, half a cup of bees, I throw them in a mason jar that I've taken the lid out of and replaced with a wire mesh. I dump isopropyl alcohol on them. It kills the bees in there but it releases all the mites off the bees. And then what I do is I dump it out onto like a white lid and I can count how many mites are in there 
per the about 300 bees that I just washed. And so that gives me a good ratio of how many mice do I have per 100 bees. That tells me where I'm at. Uh, you don't really want to have more than about two, bee, two mites per 100 bees. If it get, the higher it gets, the more risk you are of having problems that come from mites, which um, different diseases and wing deformation, all that sort of thing. So I measure how many mites I have, and then I use that to determine how I'm going to treat them. So um, last year I used the product Thymol, which is a natural product that comes from the thyme plant. Um, and I used that in the fall before I winterized my hives. Um, and it's a, a product that's pretty readily available. But I think uh, this summer I'm going to try a different strategy because I don't want to use the same type of a treatment twice in a row to prevent some building of a tolerance, for example. So the question was, how do you, if you have one hive and you want to just keep it to one hive, how do you do that? It's challenging to have one hive. So I'm going to start my, my own bees um, at home this year, and I'm going to start with two hives because of that reason. Uh, it's hard when, uh, when a hive is growing to not split it. One option you can is to give some bees away to someone that's wanting to start a hive. Um, another option you can look into is the modified DeMary method that I talked about earlier on how to kind of artificially split your hive and bring it back together. But either way, you're going to get to a point, hopefully, where your bees are doing so well that they outgrow their space. Um, so if you just want to keep one hive, the best tip I could give you is to give some bees away to someone that wants to start a hive. Can I put hives right next to each other to keep them warm in the wintertime? And yeah, the answer is yes. So that way they have less space sort of to keep warm. They can kind of share that a little bit. You can put them all together on like a pallet or something. Um, but I think you'd be surprised how well they'll do on their own. That's a very good question. How do you find the mites on your bees without killing them? There is an alternative to the alcohol wash method that I talked about earlier, and it's a powder sugar method. It's the same exact thing, except without, instead of dumping alcohol into the jar, you would dump powdered sugar into the jar. Um, some articles I've read show that the alcohol wash is a lot more accurate, but I think that the powdered sugar one is pretty close. So it's a really good option if you don't want to kill any of the bees in your hive to measure the amount of mites that you have. So I definitely encourage you guys to look up the powdered sugar mite test um, and that will help you determine where you're at with the mites in your hive. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really enjoyed being here. I hope you left with a little more confidence and maybe some enthusiasm to get going. I know I'm super excited to start my own hives this spring. Um, if you're ever at Boise State, I'm in the student union on the first floor in the game center where all the bowling's at. I have a really weird job, so come check it out and I'd love to show you around. It's a great place. Thank you. <laughs>